everyone, welcome back to this episode of Prime News. Uh, we got five big stories for you today. Uh, but before we get into those stories, I do want to remind you, we have a brand new giveaway going on right now for two copies of Super Mario 3D All-Stars plus Bowser's Fury. To enter for a chance to win one of those two copies, head down to the description or the pinned comment. Also, I would greatly appreciate if you guys would go and hit that subscribe button because, hey, uh, we're on our road to 70K, which is just a cornerstone step to get to 100k hopefully here in 2021 all right let's get into it and our first story is actually about apex legends now if you recall it was actually rumored slash leaked a while ago that we were going to get apex legend release date for switch coming like on february 8th february 12th something like that whenever the new season dlc etc was going to drop however we haven't actually had it officially announced it's just been kind of discovered over time well the game director for apex legends responded to someone on twitter who asked them about hey you know are we actually going to get uh, an update on the switch version or the DLC or whatever tomorrow and the game director responded and said yes so it looks like we are going to actually get an update today uh, so literally before you even watch this episode the news might already be out there in fact if it's out there when I'm editing this I'll probably just edit it in if we have that news but yeah it's we're getting an update today so hopefully we get a switch release date along with it so adam conover uh he has has done various uh, c comedy series over the years i've uh, been a writer all that jazz worked at college humor well he had talked about a time when he was working at college humor uh where he was working on a star fox clay motion or claymation however you would like to call that uh style series officially with nintendo it was going to be a college humor series and he was working with shigeru miyamoto he actually talked about this on a recent podcast he was on and what's interesting is not only do we find out about the star fox project which obviously never happened it was canceled we find out why it was canceled and it had to do with the zelda netflix series so remember the old zelda netflix series rumor that was out there well it turns out that According to Adam Conover, that was a legitimate thing that Nintendo and Netflix were going to do. And when it leaked on the Wall Street Journal, Nintendo ended up getting cold feet and decided to back off of that and all of the other projects they were working on, including the Star Fox Clay Motion project. And he actually saw Shigeru Miyamoto in person, so this isn't like a, a thing that we can even, you know, oh, did this really happen? No, he's claiming, hey, I literally talked to Shigeru Miyamoto, like this was a thing that was going to happen. Uh, he also notes that Netflix actually leaked uh, this the Zelda Netflix series on purpose. It was not a rogue employee. So it's always thought when these leaks happen, it's a rogue employee. But in this case, he's claiming Netflix did it on purpose to try to build hype uh, for the announcement. And they actually ended up ruining their chance of actually making the series. So kind of sucks. Uh, I guess the idea of that Zelda Netflix series was supposed to be like a Game of Thrones style Zelda game or Zelda show that was just more family friendly, you know, obviously sans nudity, no swearing, uh, maybe not so much bloodshed, but it is what it is. Uh, we ended up not getting that series or getting the Star Fox. It's fun to wonder what if, but uh, Wall Street Journal and Netflix, I guess, spoiled our chance at that. So the folks behind uh, Google Stadia, chiefly Phil Harrison, has announced that they are closing their development studio, uh, what is it, SG&E, I believe, uh, and that Jade Raymond has left. And the reason cited is basically that game development is really hard, it's really expensive, and they're basically just not good at it. Uh, so Google's just full out admitting, hey, we didn't have a good time. Uh, we've had other reports come out about this uh, that they just didn't really um, understand fundamentally how to make games, uh, something like a, a dev environment that's very similar to the struggles Amazon has had, except without funding very well. Like Google wasn't funding the development studio very well. And it kind of sucks because Jade Raymond was, was the big name they hired to try to run all of this because Jade Raymond has actually founded Ubisoft Toronto, which has been a very successful studio for Ubisoft. So it kind of sucks to see that it didn't work out. The environment didn't work out. Google ended up not understanding how to make games correctly. And while they'll still have maybe a couple games that the studio is working on come out in the short term, 
Uh, it's basically closed down. They're going to be move, you know, trying to find other jobs for the people that are working there. Uh, it's notable if you are one of those employees that was working there that's about to lose your job or has lost your job. I know that Microsoft Game Studios, uh, they're actually looking for 456 different people, so maybe look into that. I'm sure you know if you're already in the industry, you're already looking into alternatives such as that. Uh, so it kind of sucks. Uh, some people are speculating what this means for the future of Google Stadia. Phil Harrison did like defend it and basically say, hey, look, the technology works. We saw it with Cyberpunk 2077. It actually delivered the best experience out there. Uh, we we're dedicated to the technology. We're still going to be working with third-party partners. So Google is claiming anyways that they are not giving up on Google Stadia. They're just not going to make exclusive content for it anymore. So it's just going to be focused on game streaming and third-party content. Uh, we'll see how long that goes for. All I know is this is like kind of the first pillar to topple with Google Stadia. And this is before we get the other services out there uh, at mass capacity, such as, you know, xCloud. So we'll see. Uh, I know people have been worried about Google Stadia's demise for a while. This is the first real sign that something isn't going right for them. Uh, but I will say this, as someone who has used Google Stadia, the service works. It works very, very well, and it's kind of a shame to see that Google can't figure the rest of it out. But they got the infrastructure right, so that's a start. For this next story, I'm going to have to look at my notes because there's a lot to talk about. Uh, this is a big one. Nintendo is replacing their online infrastructure server side when it comes to online gaming on the Nintendo Switch. This is massive news because Nintendo has been using the next system, which, which is 18 years old and not even compatible with many mobile networks. So there's been a lot of issues with Nintendo online, online pretty much since the beginning of them doing online stuff. They've been using this next system on 3DS, Wii U, and Switch, and every game currently released uses that online system on Switch. So all the issues we've had online starts and begins, obviously, with the infrastructure on the server side. Well, Nintendo is replacing it, and they actually done some clever things here. So let me reference the notes so I get this all 100% correct here. So the new system is called N. PLN. I'm sure like Nintendo Network is the NN part. Uh, what the PL is, I don't know. Uh, it's being replaced, um, you know, that next system. And there's actually been one thing on Switch so far that has been used as a test run. And that was the Monster Hunter Rise demo was the first one to use it. Uh, and I did notice while using the Monster Hunter demo and I played online, I didn't have any issues. So you know, that's something to throw out there that I don't remember anyone reporting issues. Granted, it's just a demo, but we'll see. Uh, that's Anyway, so they tested it. They did a test run with it, with that demo. Um, it works on networks, as I noted before, that previously were incompatible with Next, uh, such as mobile data networks. MPLN is entirely brand new. Nobody else is using this technology. No one else is using this infrastructure, and it was developed in-house at Nintendo by NCL. It uses the Google Cloud platform potentially as a front for the Amazon servers, or it's just straight up using Google servers and services, which wouldn't be a surprise because if you didn't know, Nintendo's voice chat program on your phone is using Google's cloud services as well. All right, so the end result, and this is the end goal of, of what should happen here, is over time, games are gonna get patched from the next system to the new system, uh, and their features of that server infrastructure will get expanded a smoother experience with better on play, uh, online play and more consistent connections. And this all comes from ThomasNet underscore MC on Twitter, who is a developer himself. He's also spoken with other developers that are currently testing this with their games. And they are noting that the it's just a lot smoother of an experience than it was on the old Next system. So this is basically really, really good news for those of us out there that were hoping for Nintendo to address online issues. It's not like a, a cure-all. It's not going to fix everything. We've talked in the past about peer-to-peer -peer and, and using broader networks. And um, we haven't gotten onto the nitty-gritty of the actual base infrastructure is old, dated, and not really that serviceable for today. Nintendo apparently has known this whole time because they've been developing their own system. Uh, so we'll have to see how it goes. Right now we have one example of it with the Monster Hunter Rise demo. Went really, really well, in my opinion, anyways. I don't have all the data on their end. I, you know, 
So maybe some of you guys did have issues. Uh, but if you didn't, I guess that's a prime example of what you can expect from future Nintendo games, and then hopefully the older games get patched with it as well. So our last story is one you've maybe heard of yesterday. There was a number of people talking about it, but me being a Zelda guy, I mean, I'd be remiss if I didn't end uh, Prime News today with this story. Breath of the Wild 2 has reportedly rumored to have a release window now. This comes from an Austrian retailer called Gameware. Now, we are talking about a listed date or, or period of release on an online retailer. I realize that this is very easy to dismiss because we've seen a bunch of these over the years and they're almost never true. However, this particular place, Gameware, has actually been known to be really accurate with these sorts of dates thrown out there. I can give you a prime example. They were the online retailer to leak the release date of Melody of Memory from the Kingdom Hearts series. And they were the first place to have that date. And it was before it was announced. And then it turned out they were actually 100% correct. So we can literally point to something they did quite recently and say, hey, look, they just did this and they were right. So we shouldn't just dismiss when they have something listed for Breath of the Wild 2. And what is the release date they have listed for Breath of the Wild 2? Well, good news, it's coming this year, but we don't know an exact date. All we know is we don't have to wait till the end of the year. They actually stated on their website, it is coming quarter two of 2021. Now, as they are a retailer and not Nintendo themselves, Nintendo works on a fiscal quarter. Uh, the, they, these people, retailers work on a yearly quarter. So quarter two of 2021 begins April 1st and ends at the end of June. So any time in those three month period, Breath of the Wild 2 is reportedly coming out according to this retailer. What do I think about it? I think obviously the anytime we can get Breath of the Wild and more Breath of the Wild and more Breath of the Wild, I am all for it. Uh, Nintendo is a company that uh, announces things when they're ready. My initial thought is that maybe there's not enough run up here to get Breath of the Wild 2 out. Like they like to have longer hype cycles with Zelda games. Then again, lately they've been just announcing and dropping, announcing and dropping, announcing and dropping. Remember like everyone said, oh, they threw Pikmin 3 Deluxe out there to die the way they announced it and didn't really hype it up. And then Pikmin 3 Deluxe is the best selling Pikmin game of all time. Um, oh man, Super Mario 3D All-Stars only had like a month of hype. It's sold like almost 9 million copies. It's probably going to be over 10 uh, by the end of this year. Uh, by the time they're done selling it on March 31st, right? Like, Nintendo is seeing massive success without directs, without having long hype cycles. So, who are we to say they can't just drop an announcement? Also, it's February. If you didn't know, February 21st, 35th anniversary of Zelda. I'm just saying that, like, it would make sense they could drop an announcement this month and have it come out, you know, in June, in April, in May, you know? I, I'm just saying it's possible. We shouldn't dismiss it, especially with the way Nintendo's been re reacting lately. All right, that's all I got for you guys. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode of Prime News. I hope you've been enjoying this news format. Uh, I got to go. I got to, you know, get this footage all transferred and everything. I got to eat some, some breakfast of champions over here, uh, get my, work, my morning workout in. All right, I'm good. Catch you guys in the next video.